We are the nerds. We are the nerds of the apocalypse. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Trex, and I'm here with Showtime here from South Carolina Comic Con, and we are standing next to our favorite writers. On my right, we got Ben Jensen, writer of Flash, Green Lantern Corps, The Leg, Pinocchio Vampire, and who are you standing next to? I'm standing next to Robert Benton, author of Exo Manowar, as well as Green Lantern, and you co-write uh, Core and Flash? I co wrote the Flash with Van, I co wrote the Core with Van for about six issues. Okay. For the last year and a half, he's been doing it all by himself. Alright. So, once again, I'll be polite and I'll start off with you. Okay. <laughs> uh, I wanted to start off and also trying to be polite. Uh, I really want to talk about how well these two respond to public uh, outcries. <laughs> like, when someone puts something on uh, Facebook, they'll say, hey, they'll respond to it. It's great that you guys are able to do that. You were talking about a little bit the Valiant panel. And uh, I've actually spoken with you a couple times on there, and it's just, it's really awesome to see that interaction with the uh, with the fans, and I'm sure it's really helped out with uh, the stories. Yeah, I mean, in all fairness, I didn't know it was actually you corresponding with me, otherwise I might not have answered. But, <laughs> I use um, a note of page. Yeah, I'll, I'll keep an eye out for that in the future. But, um, no, I mean, I, I feel very blessed to be able to do what I do, and so, you know, people that want to reach out to me and say they like the books or whatever, I'm always, you know, happy to engage with them. I mean, there's plenty of people I talk to on, on Twitter that I meet at conventions that I, you know, I don't know, but, you know, uh, I love talking to them, and, you know, it's, it's the nice thing about comics is it's, it's a big industry, but it still feels kind of like a family, you know? Yeah. Everybody's real down to earth, and, you know, we're all just people, you know, so I'm, I'm very appreciative of anybody that, that reads any of my stuff in like Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's really, like, the least you can do to, you know, respond and interact with people, and it, it is by far one of the coolest things in comics that you make this stuff and like you do it on your own kind of hidden away from the world and then it goes out and people read it and interact with it and enjoy it and then they come back to you you know and show you that they they liked it and it's, it's just a very very cool thing so you know it, it doesn't take a great deal of effort or time to <laughs> you know give them a little bit back yeah uh, i mean and i've just been loving your work with Exo Man of War, with, with The Flash, working with Van, uh, and even Green Lantern Corps. Uh, I mean, I'm not the biggest Hal Jordan fan, but, uh, but I mean, Hal, Who Hal is. <laughs> Thank you. Hal? <laughs> Hal, what have I told you about talking about yourself? All right, stop it. Um, <laughs> no, um, yeah, so let's, uh, I guess we can talk about uh, how's, how's Green Lantern going? It's going great. We just had issue 40 come out, which is a pretty pivotal issue in the series. We're setting up a new direction that's been in the works for ever since right after Lights Out. I've known that this is where I was taking the book. So we've been playing a port for a very long time. It all worked out and ended up being pretty fortuitous with, with the DC break and convergence. It all kind of fell together. Uh, the new direction that I wanted to do already fit in with all of that. And so, um, you know, it's, it's, it's all been great. And Billy's done a new character design for Hal, which you've seen a piece of online. So you'll see more of it pretty soon. Um, a lot of big changes. It's going to be a big departure for the series in a lot of ways but also stay very true to who he is as a character. Nice. Yeah. So Exo Man of War is also continuing as well and that's been good. That's one of one of your biggest ones, right? Sure yeah. Uh, he kickstarted Valiant. That's that's what I'm going with. <laughs> All on these little shoulders. Yeah. There was a group of four of us when they relaunched the company with me, Josh Dysart, Fred Van Lente, Dwayne Suzinski. We each had one of the launch books. Um, Mine was the first one to come out, but only by like a month. So we all started the company up together. But I've been doing it about three years now, and I still have a lot of fun with it. Um, I already know what the next arc is. I'm putting up the Rush 38 and what the arc is behind that. So, oh, wow. Uh, you know, you have to have a time on it? Absolutely, yeah. I try to get as far ahead because you also don't know when you're going to have to slot in uh, a uh, fill in artist. You know, to give the other artists some time to catch up, so it helps to have some scripts in the bank. So you now I'm four or five months out on XO, I think I'm five months out on Green Lantern, so I'm trying to stay ahead of stuff so you can be ready when that new arises. Yeah. Uh, Dead Hand just started and just out the door, just amazing. Appreciate it, thank you, yeah. Uh, 
Uh, I mean, just going back to the blind home planet was uh, really was really and it, what made me mad because I see all the previews and all these other issues. I'm like, stop teasing me with this. Yeah. I'm, I'm skipping it. Just close my book. I don't care about it anymore. Yeah, I'm unfortunately, done. that's the nature of the business. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you know, Man and I, so many times we've worked on stories together where it's flash or you co-write or something like on Green Lantern where all the books are coordinating together and it's still we're both a godhead. You know, we're yes. both, he's writing the Green Lantern four issues. I'm writing the Green Lantern issues with some other writers. We're building it all up together. So much of it gets put out ahead of time. That's just marketing. That's, that's the environment we live in now. Yeah. So if you don't want to see it, stay away from it. But <laughs> believe me, there's nothing that uh, even covers. Yeah. Like a lot of yeah. stuff gets given away on covers for solicitations. That and sometimes the cover doesn't have nothing to do yeah. with the book. Yeah, so it's just kind of the nature of the business. You, know? you got uh, any big projects in the shoot right now besides the EXO uh, and uh, the big thing that I'm working on now as well that's greater owned is I have a uh, middle grade novel series. The first one's coming out from Simon & Schuster uh, in June. It's uh, for 8 to 12 year olds. It's about a little kid who comes into possession of a superhero cape and it turns him into a superhero but oh, there's a catch to that. He has to figure out why it works sometimes and why it doesn't. The artist on it is uh, Dusty Higgins. It's a combination of prose comics. When he turns into a hero, it flips over to a comic book. Dusty Higgins said, Bam, work with him, Pinocchio Vampire Slayer. He's a really good artist. He does the comics portion of the book, so that'll be out in June. Awesome. Hey, over to me. I'm standing with Van Jensen. And first of all, we have to say, uh, rest in peace to the core. It's, it, it's you. I, I have to share the story because it was at Heroes Con two years ago before you, before the books actually came out that we the interviewed. before. Yeah, before we interviewed you guys. And sadly enough, I couldn't use the footage because it was just horrible. We had people walking away. The audio was bad. But now it's two years later, and it's kind of the anniversary with uh, Green Lantern re getting rebooted in the core ending. Uh, how has, for the past two years with the Green Lantern Corps, how has been your experience with this? Oh, I mean, it's yeah. just an opportunity of a lifetime, really. You know, it um, just, a, it, I don't know, a really special experience to, to take a book that I read as a kid. I mean, it was. I had a cousin who got me into comics when I was like four and five, and uh, Green Lantern Corps was that was like that was his series, and so that was one of the early things I grew up reading. And, uh, and then John Stewart was kind of the Green Lantern uh, when I was growing up, so it was really a great opportunity to write a book very focused on him and to, to both kind of address his past but also build him up, you know, do some new things with the character. So. You know, it's, it's always a little bit bittersweet when something goes away or something ends, but I mean, I, I told the stories I wanted to tell. Yeah. Um, I did exactly what I wanted to do with the series. It seemed like fans responded to it, so, you know, there's no regrets, for sure. Just, the love story with him and Fatality was, uh, was actually pretty awesome. I, 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 I didn't think I was going to like it, but I, I really did. And then, of course, the twist during Lights Out was... <laughs> well, thank you for that, by the way. Yeah. Uh, my, my heart did not need that. Uh, but yeah, then with issue 40, just a blockbuster of an ending oh. to go back to using an... I'm not, really, I'm not trying to go spoilers, but using a device that really broke Jon Stewart as the character, bringing it back to bring to the end of the series. Uh, good homage. Good, yeah. good, good job. Yeah, I mean, it's it's something that kind of the, the whole the explosion and death of Zanzi has been brought up again and again and again, and it's become this kind of, it's almost been a stumbling block for the character, and so we talked about it with the editors of just what's a way that we can kind of remove that to really, like, the whole arc was really about allowing John to, you know, move forward. And and this isn't the end of his story. I mean, really, this is almost like the starting point for John Stewart, or a new starting point. He's going to be an integral part of everything that the Green Lantern team's doing going forward. So, you know, a lot more really exciting John Stewart stuff to come. I want, and this is a question for you too, Robert. Uh, with the futures in one shots, we saw the future of Hal Jordan, and then we also saw the future for John Stewart with, in Green Lantern Corps. Uh, we saw the shadow market really begin its begin here in this book. Uh, I mean, did you have any look through with how Futures End started off with, like that story-wise? Yeah, I mean, it was all really planned out, you know, a long ways ahead. And, and Futures End, the way that, it, at least uh, for Green Lantern Corps that I approached it, was I almost wanted to give readers, just like you're seeing the future, ahead of when you see the present. Yeah. So 
So I wanted to give readers almost like a future to root against. It's like this is the worst case scenario. <laughs> and so we really need to hope that this doesn't happen. And it's kind of establishing the thread, establishing like worst case scenario, what happens to the characters. And there's a look at like Jon Stewart, if he didn't get past all of like the old hurt inside him. Like what if he never overcame that? This is this grizzled old kind of awful dude that he turned into. <laughs> yeah. And so, and then the rest of the series was really about how he didn't go that route. Like he chose a different path. So, I don't know, I mean, that's a lot of subtext that maybe people picked up on it, maybe <laughs> not, but that was the plan. Uh, what about for Green Lantern? Did you have any uh, storyline with the Future Zen title, the one shot tied into the actual uh, Yearbook? Uh, not as much as I see which I'll be going into. Yeah, when they asked us to pitch on the Flash, we knew Future's End was going to be happening a certain number of months later, so we made it an integral part of our first arc. Yes. And so everything grew out of it in a lot of ways. With Green Lantern, it was a, a little bit different, but there are definitely um, some things that you'll start to see after we come back from Convergence with this new direction. You'll see some of those things hinted at, but it's not like I'm looking at that Future's End issue as some sort of finish line I've got to get to. <laughs> right. Basically, it's the what if, uh, just like how more. Yeah, and like it, it's five years in the future, which is powerful time. And it's like 20 Things years can change. Now, so. If the entire New 52, I don't even think it's five years away. You know? So it's, uh, it'll be a while. So uh, going on to the Flash now. How did you guys actually approach this book with uh, being a new creative team? Well, with, I mean, with Future Zen, like it was, you know, Rob with the uh, the original concept. Of, Flash, and we, you know, we knew about Future's End, so it was really Rob kind of leading the charge on that of really integrating this event into the ongoing story in a way that none of the other books, I guess, they really, they really didn't tie in. You, uh, I mean, Green Lantern, I guess a couple did more directly, but um, yeah, it was, Flash was definitely integral. Yeah, and it, I don't know, like we kind of, it was like we were telling in Green Lantern universe, we were telling a like shapeshifter story. And in the Flash, we were telling a time travel story. And we would have these like long conversations, you know, on the phone and in person, just like trying to keep all this stuff straight, the timelines and who's who and all this stuff. And at the end, of it, we were like, "All right, enough of that." Yeah, like, halfway through our first arc on Flash, we had one ending in mind for future Flash, and that was going to be the end of it. Yeah. But they liked the character and they wanted to keep him around. So halfway through. We had to figure out how to make that ending not happen and do a whole new ending that would now create another arc that we could continue to use that character <laughs> when half of the issues are already published. You know what yeah. I mean? And so those are the kind of constraints that get put on you that take you in places that you never would go otherwise. But it's, that's kind of the fun of it. It's like somebody dumps a puzzle on the table and you've never even seen the picture and you've got to figure out how to put it together and what the picture is. That's part of the challenge of working on these kind of properties it makes it fun because if you're doing creative around, you can do whatever you want. Yeah. It's like unfettered creativity, which is one kind of creativity. But to have constraints put on you and have to figure you out your way around them is a whole other kind of creativity. So in a way, like in some sick perverse way, <laughs> I almost like it when they're like, we're gonna do Future's End or we're gonna do the Villains Month issue or whatever. And now I gotta figure out how to not make it ancillary and make it count and all that kind of stuff, you know? So I don't know, it's kind of fun for me. What was the difference between, I mean, since you both worked on Green Lantern uh, Corps and The Flash, like, what was the differences between coming from the universe of the space and going into time travel with Flash? Creative like, one. Yeah, I mean, it's one one thing is completely cosmic and, and very, I would say, is one of the most grounded heroes in the whole DCU, you know? So, like, literally, he has to touch the ground in order to get it. <laughs> I wanted so, to do a pun, but I wasn't yeah. sure what to say. So, uh, <laughs> so, yeah, they're polar opposites, but again, I, that's something that I do and I think Van does too. Like every, every project, project, do something different. So you're stretching yourself and you're challenging yourself in new ways. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. I guess I didn't realize how challenging Green Lantern Corps was to write until I started on The Flash. And not <laughs> to say, it's just Core is, is a complicated book in that huge cast, constantly going to new locations and new alien races and there's just it's like you're building up new architecture for new worlds and new you know histories for new peoples constantly and and balancing a cast of thousands essentially and and i mean that was the first 
you know, DC series ever worked on, so I didn't know anything else. And then, I mean, The Flash, we did some complicated stuff with it, but at the same time, it's like a dude on Earth who runs fast, and, you know, okay, I got that. <laughs> I don't have to come up with a new Earth every single month. Like, that's, that's kind of nice. <laughs> All right, so uh, just quickly going over here to your Kickstarter program that uh, launched last uh, last fall. Yeah. Uh, that I'm really happy it took off. Uh, called the leg. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the, you? You Ooh. tweeted out about this concept, and even I was like, "What?" Yeah. Um, so it's the disembodied leg of former Mexican President Santa Ana, uh, adventuring through Mexico in the 1930s. Um, Speaking of. of Really easy to grab. Huh? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it's like partially based in history, and it was just this weird historical anecdote that I, I always really loved Mexican history and folklore, and it was kind of an excuse to write about it. And it was actually the first script I ever wrote. So I kind of wrote it just like I'm going to write this thing to figure out how to write a comic book script, mm -hmm. and it would have never gone anywhere. But I met this artist who it turned out was from Mexico who really wanted to draw it, so. I said, all right, let's do it, and you know, got it 100% finished, and then put it up on Kickstarter, and it was successful, and uh, we uh, distributed it through Top Shelf, and so, yeah, now it's a real book, which is kind of surreal. Uh, <laughs> it's a good story. I mean, I read it back when it was a script, yeah. but I always really liked it. You know, it's like a magical realism kind of thing, which is something I don't, as a writer, I don't know that I have the capacity for that, Like my mind just doesn't operate that way. Like, if I had this idea, I'd be like, well, that doesn't make sense. So the basically, what you're, body. So you're gonna get with him anything, to you know? work on a script for a Thing movie from Adam's family. That's basically yeah, what we're gonna have yeah, to work yeah. with here. So, uh, you know, the kind of stories I always appreciate most are the ones where you see something that, you know, you don't have the capacity really to do yourself. You yeah. Know what I mean? So, uh, I've always loved that. I thought it was a great story, so I was happy with it. <laughs> well, is there anything else that you guys want to plug before we go? Plug away. I have no. I think we ran the gamut. Yeah. yeah. You guys <laughs> Well, uh, this right here was Thursday Apocalypse at South Carolina Comic Con with Van Jensen and Robert Venditti. Once again, guys, thank you so much. You guys have been a pleasure to talk to, as usual. And be sure to hit them up on their Facebook and their social media everywhere. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one.